But one of the first people, and definitely one of the first Democrats, Donald Trump met with after his election was Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. The two met on November 21st to talk over, among other things, U.S.-Syria policy. At that point, by the way, Trump had chosen only the White House Chief of Staff and his Attorney General. Interesting. Now, Representative Gabbard has sponsored a bill she says will bar the United States from supplying weapons to ISIS or other terror groups. Huh. And she joins us now on set. Congressman, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you very much. Thank so you. I was just really struck by that. He, you, you were one of the very first people he met with. Now, you issued a press release, and I'm sure some of your, you're a liberal Democrat, I think it's fair to say. Some of your constituents must have been confused. And you issued this statement. You said, I felt it was important to take the opportunity to meet with the president-elect now before the drumbeats of war that neocons have been beating drag us into an escalation of the war to overthrow the Syrian government. That's right. What did you mean by that, I guess, beyond what you said? And did, do you believe that the president-elect agrees with your views on this? Uh, I have long been outspoken about the devastating problems with our U.S. policy, generally on interventionist wars and very specifically on the need to end our counterproductive regime change war to overthrow the Syrian government. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people have lost their lives, millions of refugees, and the counterproductive result of this has been that these groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups who we proclaim to be our enemy have ended up growing stronger. Uh, so understanding that we have a new commander-in-chief coming in, it's president-elect coming into office very soon, I took the opportunity to be able to uh, get across this message to him. As a veteran, knowing and seeing firsthand the cost of war, I felt it was critical to do my part to try to help influence this new administration and extend this call to action to them to end this counterproductive war that has caused so much devastation. So what was his response? It was a very good conversation. Uh, he had some very good questions, and he was very receptive to the message that I uh, was bringing. And frankly, this is an area uh, that is not partisan. This is an issue that both Democrats and Republicans should get behind to stop arming terrorists, to stop this action that has not only caused devastation, but again, it has resulted both directly and indirectly strengthening those whom we are supposed to be trying to defeat. Right. Well, actually, there's bipartisan disagreement with you, uh, as, as you well know. So your bill is called Stop Arming Terrorists. You, uh, you've introduced it. Um, and your idea, as I understand it, is, look, the average American, you, me, not allowed to send weapons or aid terror groups. We and would yet, be thrown in jail. But the U.S. government, as a matter of policy, arms and aids these groups for a bunch of different reasons. But that's happening. Well, and this is the problem, Tucker, is that there's a double standard here. Uh, that for years now, our government, working with countries like Saudi Arabia, uh, Turkey and Qatar, uh, have been through the CIA quietly been arming and supporting these groups that are directly working with groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, all in this effort to overthrow the Syrian government. They've been funneling support through uh, countries like Saudi Arabia uh, and others who are also, again, directly supporting these groups. Uh, this is madness that this has been allowed to occur for so long and madness that we have allowed the devastating consequences to occur as a result without checking it. And that's exactly what my bill does. The Stop Arming Terrorist Act very simply prohibits using American taxpayer dollars through any agency, overt or covert, or covert, whether it be the CIA, the DOD, or any other agency, from directly or indirectly providing weapons, money, intelligence, or other types of support to these groups that are uh, allied with and working with groups like uh, al-Qaeda, as this is happening right now today in Syria. Well, you obviously haven't been listening to some famous members of the Senate who've described those groups as freedom fighters, and you just don't understand how great they are. Uh, clearly. <laughs> this is the problem, though, Tucker, is that uh, only recently, this has been happening for years, but only recently has uh, have a few people in the media actually start talking about the truth of what we have been doing, right. about how our taxpayer dollars have been uh, spent there. Uh, and this fallacy that there are so-called moderate fighters uh, trying to overthrow the Syrian government just is not the reality right. today. When it you doesn't see exist. U.S. weapons in the hands of extre Islamic extremists and terrorists, you have to ask how that happened. And I'm glad you're asking yeah. that. Yeah. Well, we're asking it. We're trying to solve it. So, you know, I'm urging your viewers, we're trying to urge every member of Congress to sign on to this very sensible bill that is good for our country and good for our security. Well, Godspeed. Thank you. Thanks. Aloha.